Thank you, Axel Toss and Lawler. We have another Rival Series matchup coming up. And if you have been watching the games, I know I have. I mean, you were on the desk. I assume you were watching. I know watching. we were, like, clapping backstage yeah, and stuff. We, that was fun. Yeah, like, games were definitely there. They will not understand what we're referencing. <laughs> that's but, yes, totally that's very okay. true. But you're up. Those first two games going to game five, neck and neck, in high quality Rocket League. The passing plays were there, the team plays on point, and just the speed of the game, very good. Defense, very solid. Europe, very, very deep. Uh, I don't know if you know Joro from the Dudes. He's very active on, on Reddit and on the subreddit, Rocket League Esports. If you haven't been there, then you need to go there. Reddit.com slash R slash Rocket League Esports. But he commented about the depth of these European teams. He said, in North America, anyone outside of the top eight would have been a huge surprise. And he considered Incognito part right. of the top eight, even though they were ninth. But in Europe, he said, anyone from the top 16 can has a legitimate shot at making it in, and it would be no surprise. So can you speak to the depth of these European teams? I mean, it's one of those situations where even the guys at the desk were talking about that. Nordevin, they're number 13, but they're still just competitive. To be able to bring a team that has the category of players of Moyben to Game 5 clearly speaks volumes on what they're capable of. Um, for me, it's just a matter of these teams pretty much embody the aspect of the grind. They play in weeklies every single week. They're trying to get that practice and those seating advantages under their belt as much as possible, but when it really comes down to it, and Wave kind of pointed that on the desk, like this is probably going to be the closest to that situation, but the stress is at a much higher level. Absolutely. And this is an elimination match. If you lose this, your hopes are done. A clear down by Jay Walls. Faye over to D7. A good demo from Regnum. He's going to try to follow that up. Faye blocking it off now. Etrex. J Walls getting that boost, gonna try to clear it. He misses it. Regnum's gonna hit it up to J Walls. Pugs gets a piece of it. And a hit into the corner from FaZe. Now D7, a good pass into the middle. J Walls prevents Pugs A from getting that shot, but a good look. Now a counterattack opportunity. J Walls is gonna try to get it out into the middle. Pugs A shutting that down. Etrex. Putting a shot in, D7 had to hustle to get there in time. Pugs, they actually taking the place of Seeks. Reganon's actually former teammate. These guys trying to battle it out, making their comeback into the rival series, trying to make their way eventually back into the RLCS. It's been a while since season one. And you can just get the sense of the feeler type of gameplay here. Don't want to make any Huge mistakes give up that early goal on as it usually leads to a victory as a demo comes out from Bugs A, but the pressure doesn't matter, goes back in their half. Yeah, a lot of back and forth right now. A few decent shots, nothing too scary. Nordevin hanging very closely with Ep Epsilon right now, and they are very, very much outclassed in terms of seeding. But again, the depth in Europe Showing right now is these teams neck and neck out of the gate. Seemingly transferring the power of possession. Pressure on both sides pretty even. Just a matter of who can maintain it first. Eventually deny that boost. Get a shot on net that forces someone on a position. As another clear comes out from Reganov. Played right in the midfield to D7 who's waiting oh, with a doink over there. the top. And that was a good idea by D7. Just getting that little doink. And a shot there. Testing Pugze, but he holds strong. D7, pressing it down to Faye. Now Regan, I'm putting a shot in. Pugze is going to be there. And then now Faycal is going to put a shot in. J Walls, he had enough boost to get there, but he knew that was off target. Really good play by Faycal as well. Checking to the ball in that situation. There's two players underneath him. Rather than waiting for it to come to him, he jumps on the wall and gets to it first. And this is a much slower pace than we've seen in the first two series. Pugs A doing a good job going to the wall first rather than waiting for it, trying to pinch that downfield, but it does not work out. And you see both D7 and Faye going for that one. Not getting punished for it. D7 is going to have a shot opportunity, but that one is turned aside by Jay Walls. Faye tries to clear it, but he's going to set it up for Regnum. That shot going in, he had the option to pass to J-Walls. Decided to take the shot himself. It was a good shot, but 
I think Jay Walls might have had a better angle there. That's why he needs to be careful. Too committed on that back side of the defense. Good spell trouble if the pressure gets contested immediately. As another shot comes in from Reganop, trying to play that, but bounced out off that crossbar. Trying to look for a clear, but immediately back pass to maintain possession and a bump following through. But pressure from Nordovan. That one narrowly missing. Nordovan really amping this up right now. Reganop turning to keep that in the zone. He's gonna try to starve this Epsilon team from boost. One minute remaining, we're still scoreless in the first game of this best of five. Well, one minute left in game number one. D7 playing that into the corner. As he bounces across, two trying to pressure. It doesn't look like it's gonna matter as a third player comes into rotation, challenges it, pinches it over to the right Ooh, side. But pass. North has the ability to play it up. Unfortunately, it bounces out to his teammate, who's going to play him back into the corner again. Just can't find a pass inside as huh. these teams battling, tripling, tripping over each Did other. Did you see Regnum? He actually bumped D7 into bumping his teammate. So it's <laughs> a very bump-filled moment. Taking that pool shot to a whole different level as a pinch over the top, trying to flick it past. Defense of both these teams saw, like you mentioned, in the pregame. Yeah, and, and what I'm seeing, too, is a lot of... You know, solo play, selfish plays. And that's, maybe maybe it's not incredibly selfish, but they did have options to use each other. Reganum put some very good shots in, putting another shot in there, but they just haven't been able to get anything by either defense. Both teams scoreless into overtime for game one. Those feelers indeed. We might see a little bit more of that here. Try not to make any crucial mistakes, oh. but it doesn't matter. Only six seconds, and Fake Ow makes a beautiful shot top left. And credit to D7 here. He could have easily hit that ball, but Faye calling him off. Power. That allowed Faye to have an unimpeded shot, just blasting it into the upper corner. Beautiful placement, and Epsilon, the number three seed in Europe, takes game number one. Making sure to get underneath that, but look at the defense. That from was the Epsilon. only shot. That's all that matters, right? One for one. 100%, <laughs> man. Beautiful placement, but playing a ton of defense. I mean, let's talk about that. The fact that they had to be behind that net for so long. But it did seem like they each had their opportunities that traded off a little bit. But towards the end, like, they were under a ton of pressure from Nordavind. Nordavind. Yeah. These Nordavind. team names, man. Nordavind. Nordavind. These hard European words. If Nordavind. only Shogun was here to help us. But really, Nordavin, they did, like you said, they had a majority of the possession. They were pressing Epsilon quite a bit, and they had some opportunities. Regnum, he had some, some very good shots, very well-placed shots. But at this level, even if you have a powerful shot, if there's one or two people right. in net and you're at a distance, it doesn't really matter how hard you hit it. If you don't have a bounce shot right to you and you can blast that, then there's really not much hope. He had an opportunity to hit up uh, hit up his teammate, and he just didn't make the pass. Well, I mean, you mentioned that, talking about a lot of solo plays we were seeing out of them early on, and they just weren't able to find that connect. I mean, you saw it in earlier series earlier today as well, where they had the ability to make those pass plays, and they were connecting with it, but, like, Mal was a prime example where the passes and the shots following through just didn't really have any pace to them. You're starting to see that difference here, though. I mean, even in the midfield, I mean, he's pretty far out on that shot. He just rocket ones toward the net, catches them off guard. Here we are, game number two, Nordavend. With the heavy shot advantage, still lost to the single shot that Epsilon put on net. We'll see if they can recover here. Still looking for their first goal. Etrex off the backward. Pugs is going to be there. J Walls does get a good clear back into the net. And the demo, that's a chance, but Etrex didn't have the boost to make the play. Now Faye. Pushing up, doesn't have boost. It was a good tap there by D7. Faye just did not have the boost to work with. But they're starting to look for each other. J Walls trying to force the issue on his own. Etrex getting that out into the middle. Faye Cow, not the greatest clear. We'll see what Nordovin does with this. J Walls got that boost steal. Now Regnum, he's going to let it roll up the wall. Gets a touch over to himself. He's going to try to control it. Nope, he hits it downfield, giving up possession. Good contest in the midfield, trying to shut that down early, but it doesn't matter. Team players on both sides just waiting immediately underneath. 
positioning from both as play in the Ooh. midfield. Ooh. And that was a golden opportunity for Utrex yet again. He's had a couple of scoring chances here in both situations. Just not enough boost to make the play. In those situations where you have no boost, you have to take a perfect line because what boost allows you to do is make those minor adjustments in the air. When you have no boost, as soon as you jump, you're going where you're going. I mean, it's the only resource that we have in this game, so, so crucial. I mean, most of the decisions you make are based upon, well, how much boost do I have? Can I even get up for the aerial? Where am I in a position? Is that one's going to sneak by? Nobody in the back of the net. Yeah, Etrex. He's had a couple of chances now, finally finishing that one off. A good challenge there from J Walls. He didn't even jump on that 50 50, and the ball just plopping out. And Etrex, wide open chance for him. Two minutes gone by in game number two. Trying to find something to tie this one up early. Don't want to allow the other team to carry away with it. Thank Cow looking for that center ball. No one was there. <laughs> back to back demos, the revenge demo. Now, a strong shot, and that's going to be the equalizing goal. Like I said, within 15 seconds, these guys able to put one right back on, keeping this one close. Part of the reason why you want that is just simply the way that you have your play style. If you start to bring this gap in and the time goes down, you got to go for a little bit more riskier things, opens up for more options. Not something these guys want to face, especially with this much pressure on them. Now D7, trying to get that little flick. Tough to get any power behind. He was boostless. Fake cow coming up. Chasing this ball down. He's going to go for the boost. D7 and Pugze both commit to that, but they're going to recover just fine. Pugze just clearing that ball down. Epsilon going to regroup. Now fake cow losing out on that 50 50. But D7 getting a good enough clear to relieve that pressure. Now Regnum up, gonna go for the double tap. Just missed out, but he bought some space for his team. Etrex is gonna come in and clean up. Nordovin with synchronized touches one after another. Look how quickly they're beating the other team to the ball. Even on that one, it's just catching these guys off guard. A lot of that does have to do with the positioning as well. You need to be further back in that goal or back post. Yeah. Just the ability to approach that and make a contest on and it. And fake how he was in net. He thought that Regnum might get that double tap. So even right, though right. Regnum missed, it froze Faye in the net and allowed his teammates to keep that attack going. Nordovin with immediate pressure right off of that kickoff. Now J Walls gonna try to hit that downfield. Does get a piece of that 50-50. Now Etrex off the ceiling might have another shot chance. Wasn't able to do much with it. Now Fake Cow and D7 both working together. Pugs A launching that right back into the orange half. Etrex centering that out. Regnum's not gonna have much to work with. Now D7 passing that into the mid. J Walls beats him to it. Pugze. Good positioning by him, able to get the clear and the boost. Now a shot in. D7 off the wall. Could have been a little awkward for him. Fake out off the wall, right to Pugze. He misses. D7's there. Now one minute left on the clock. Nordovin leading in game number two. Pugze getting taken out by Regnum. Faye trying to beat out that defense. J Wall is now on the counter attack. He's got some time, got some space. Goes for the mid pass, but Pugze and D7 both close that door. D7 into the corner. A soft touch. Pugze going over to Faye. Faye not able to get that redirect. 20 seconds left on the clock. Epsilon need to make something happen right now. It's gonna be difficult under this much pressure. Now Pugze trying to slow play that. Does dodge the demo, but J Walls is gonna get a long clear. D7 misses his, sh his save, and now J Walls has an easy goal. Two seconds left on the clock, and Nordovin's gonna take game two. Regan, I'm looking so comfortable with this Norwegian duo. They've been together for roughly about six months. He's fitting in just fine, but I'm liking the demo plays that these guys are starting to come out with. 
just adding another aspect to their repertoire, making it very difficult to defend against. All tied up now in the series, moving on to game number three. And Nordevin, last game, they sh outshot Epsilon, I believe it was 10 or 11 to one. They get another 10 shots this game. This time though, they managed to put some goals in the back of the net. They were shut out last game. This time, three goals to display. So they're feeling very good. Yeah, I mentioned it just a second ago about those demos. Obviously these guys going for pretty conventional style of play, either playing into the corner and then back inside. A couple back passes here and there, but in all reality, those demos are opening up so many options for them. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And Epsilon, the number three seed, they're heavily expected to make it through, but again, just like in the first two series we saw today, we are we're seeing some back and forth. Do you think we're we're going to see another game five series? I mean, I don't see why not. I mean, that's pretty much what Europe does. We didn't get any in North America, so why not just every single game today? Yeah, going to be a game five. <laughs> so so, do it. so what what have you been seeing from Epsilon? Where where do you think they need, or what do you think they need to change to get back in this? There's some cohesion issues. I think they're missing this kind of in between. Anytime they're put under a decent amount of pressure things seem convoluted. They get in weird places, the positioning is a little bit off, and it just seems to be that, yes, it is okay to double commit on things, it is okay to make mistakes as long as someone is there to back it up, but the difficulty being, when it all comes said and done, is that they're both out of position when that's happening. They need someone to just make sure that when they're under that pressure, go to the clean rotation, follow suit, don't allow this kind of pressure to force you to make these mistakes. We'll see if they can make this mid-series adjustment. Epsilon, drop game number two, Nordevin, Able to tie it. Now right out of the gate, Fakow having to try to make the play a little awkward. Does get that block there. But Nordevin on the attack right now. Etrex going to try to pass that to himself off the wall. Pugze is there. A shot down. Easily handled by Regnum. We'll see if Epsilon can get their offense going. E Trex over to J Walls and J Walls crossbar and down gets Nordov in the lead. J Walls heating up, man. Look at that one just over the top and then a beautiful placement to flip upside down so we can hit that just light enough to get it under the crossbar. Only 32 seconds in. Nordov back on top. We're seeing the offensive excellence of Nordevend. Epsilon just not able to hang right now. And another shot opportunity. Oh. E Trex. Had he gone near post, that would have gone in. Sneaking by, able to get that one out, Bugs. Now Regnum misses that hit, but Etrex is there to keep the attack going. Goes for that second touch. D7 gets a piece. He's going to leave it for Faye. Faye putting it up. D7 and Faye both going for that. So still, we're seeing some troubles on the, uh, the offensive side of the ball for Epsilon. Just haven't been able to bring it all together. I mean, there's space and fine. You can see it here. It's just that high lob isn't going to anybody. He needs to put some pace on that and keep it low for his teammate. Because the guys that are sitting back waiting on defense has been an easy approach to that. Good read. Now Regnum. Into the middle. Pugze going for a shot on net. And oh, narrowly missing. That had so much power on it. Regnum off the corner, does get the clear. Faye missed it. Regnum chasing it down, gets the demo on Pugze, but Pugze able to get the clear. Oh, no way. The savage he had no boost. from Pugze. Are you kidding me? He stayed up there because he got denied boost from that corner that he wanted to take himself. Picks up the 12 and then just denies him out of there. What a play making advantage of that situation. Yeah, that bump from Faye Cow. My apologies. Faye Cow opening the path for the Pugze shot. But again, an unorthodox goal. We have not seen Epsilon make a passing play yet. We see so many teams rely on those infield passing plays to beat the solid defenses we have now. But there, a bump play, very heads up. But I don't know how repeatable that is. Apparently pretty often if it's Europe, I guess. I've seen a bunch of bump plays today so far. Now a block from Regnum. Missed that boost, so he's probably going to have to retreat here. Pugs A and D7 turn around. Wide D7 open with that block is going to have a wide open shot. You called it, Waller. Another demo coming out from this team. You see him, he's trying to get back, but he can't. As soon as he tries to turn around, you see another respawn on the other side. Just doesn't get the right side that he's looking for. 
Well Easy placed open end, man. as well. So, uh, on the opposite side of where it's he respawns. Away from, so. <laughs> correct, right. So Absalon starting to come alive in game number three. Fay Cow knocking that into the corner. Reganum trying to force the issue. Now D7. Beating out Etrex there, but J-Walls was in the way. And a demo coming Again. out from J-Walls. That shot almost sneaking by. Now D7. Etrex off the backboard. Pugs A is there. J-Walls denies the clear. Fake how again down the middle of the field. It's going to be a bouncer for Etrex to work with. Pugs A just denying that though. But still, Epsilon stuck in their own half yet again. Both teams doing a stellar job getting to the ball as quickly as possible. But need to be careful. You see two players on Ordovan there, both rotating back for that corner boost. Almost as if they're in sync. Need to be careful making sure to oh. split that up as a shot put on net. And that was a give and go opportunity. Regnum again opting to take the shot, but we could have seen that give and go. And that could have opened up J Walls for a beautiful shot in front of the net. Regnum, no way he would have been able to sneak that by. A lot of times these guys going for the direct approach, taking the easy route, don't want to force any mistakes. But in those situations, I mean, these guys clearly have the skill to put it on net. Another save from Fake Out. And Regnum. He, uh, you can't knock him for his accuracy. He's putting these shots on target. So just, dangerous. Yeah, it's just not enough to get by these defenses. Now Regnum putting that into the corner. Pugze hitting that up the wall. Etrex with a block. J Walls with a chance. Does get it off the backboard. A misread from Pugze. Dangerous moment there for Epsilon. J Walls did a really good job on that shot, too. He came in. That thing was going to go flying off the crossbar. He ends up backflipping into it to try and slow the pace of it just a little bit. Made it tough to read, but still went above. Now they need to break out of their own half. J Walls. Trying to float that one upfield, just under 30 seconds remaining. Nordevin still in it. They've had great pressure all game long. They're still looking for that equalizing goal. Now Etrex into the middle. Perfect pass for J Walls, but Fake Out flies across net to make the save. Now Regnum, he's going to have one more chance. J Walls has to get this into the middle. Time's running out. Someone has to turn, but no. Epsilon is just going to sit right on top of that ball and wait till the end of the game. Epsilon takes game number three. Man, they really turned it on on both sides of the pitch. The ability to get a couple of those goals, just creating opportunities, using Nordovin's own tactics, I guess, with all those demos we saw. But the defense able to hold on in those last couple of seconds. Yeah. Special shout out Fake Out. Unbelievable it, saves that game. Yeah. Fake How coming across net, doing a great job. And then Nordovin, though, they, they are out shooting Epsilon every single game. How is Epsilon able to pull off these wins? Number one, stellar defense, and then two, capitalizing on opportunity. It doesn't matter if you're getting shot on all the time, and even if you have minimal goals, if they're going in the net. So it doesn't matter if their accuracy is on point and they're taking advantage yeah, of it. Yeah, it just makes me think of the, the times that we've seen Regnum opt to take a shot that's right. easily blockable rather than going for that pass. I can't say it enough. At this level, those infield passing plays are so critical. Well, it's it's not so even, like if he's going to put that kind of shot on net, it's fine because you're forcing somebody out of the net. That's beautiful. But the issue is Nordovin doesn't have that follow-up afterwards. Yeah, it's playing the rebound, right? Right, you, right? If you shoot it in, yes, you can hope for a rebound. But even then, when you have those players in net with so much time to deal with a shot, Nine out of ten times, they're just going to bloop the ball over into the corner Good choice, and prevent Ward. you from having that follow-up shot. So I want to see, instead of Regnum taking these shots like we've been seeing him doing, let's pass that ball into the middle. Get these infield passing plays going because Nordvin's having that pressure. They just need to make those plays and finish. Yeah, I mean, it could be one of two things. One, obviously a pass inside is going to make it a little bit more difficult to save. The other option is as soon as you see that shot, that direct play on net, Find some way to either contain that, apply that pressure over and over again, or B, fight it until it's boost starved. I mean, eventually you're not gonna be able to get up for those saves. Here we are, game number four. Epsilon trying to end the journey of Nordavent and keep their journey going. Faye getting blocked by Jay Walls, but he gets immediate revenge. Demo now, again coming out. 
Faye does tap that by one defender. D7 with the boost steal, tries to center that ball back. A demo, or a bump rather, but D7 got bumped right back. Nobody from Epsilon there to follow up on a shot. Reganum's gonna tap that ball down. Touched aside by D7, Walls with the follow-up. Another follow-up by Etrex. both very, very weak shots. It is means to a good play, though. You see how well they're able to maintain that. Despite that first one not going in, two shots to follow up immediately after. It just has to be quicker and with more pace. So the idea is there. They're starting to formulate it. And the demo from Regnum takes out that final defender, but Nordovin not able to take advantage of that short power play. D7 in the corner. Regnum gets a touch, allowing J Walls to clear that up the wall. Pugze going for the backboard play. Faye looked like he accidentally feels backflipped, man. It's no good, James. Now D7 using up a lot of boost to try to win that 50-50. Pugze getting beat. D7 trying to do a pit maneuver, but J Walls gets the boost and contained, retains possession. Good pressure from him that almost lead, led to a goal. Ready to do from J Walls as well. Cutting that rotation, just applying that simple pressure. Buying a little bit more time on that back end for his team. As he had two, one in a weird 1v1 situation, the other one trying to rotate around, trying to collect boost. Pugze getting that block. Almost bumping Etrex there, that would have been dangerous. Now D7 over to Faye. Faye going for the shot. Regnum there. And now the counter attack. Regnum trying to put it over Pugze. Pugze dodged that bump attempt from J Walls and was able to Get that ball up the wall. Now Etrex goes for the touch. D7 blocking that off. D7 over to Faye. But no, Faye leaves it and goes for the demo instead. We'll see how that plays out. Nordovin recovering from that demo quite nicely. Now Regnum over in the corner, D7. Both teams just playing ping pong right now. Battling for control. Jeez. Really? He tracks. Oh, he gets beat by Faye almost getting 1v1 there. Good ball control from Jay Walls. Was able to take two defenders out of the play. Nordovin starting their attack right now. Etrex didn't read that well enough. He does turn around to keep the ball in the blue half, but the attack cut short. D7 racing towards that one, does beat Etrex. Going for the passing play into the middle. Pugs ace there, but J Walls able to cut that off. Fake count with a shot in. Regnum turning that aside. An immediate shot back in. Both J Walls and Regnum going for that one. And again, we have one minute remaining, again scoreless, similar to what we saw in game number one. Difference this time, though, is the shots are even. Just seems to be, Epsilon likes this position, very defensive heavy, and then waits for that counterattack opportunity. This pressure's on, a big clear should help them out here. Only 40 seconds remaining. This is elimination match. D7 off the backboard, J Walls going for that read. Another bump there. Etrex accidentally running into Regnum. Now J Walls, we saw him upside down, hit a crossbar down. Trying to do it again there, putting that one off the backboard. J Walls with the ceiling shot chance, does get the backboard pass, but nobody from Nordovin there. Etrex off the corner, going for the shot again. No, he goes for the pass, but again, no one from Nordovin there to follow up. Pressure still on, low on boost. They need to clear this out, relieve some of that pressure. That's one way to do it as well. One last chance, Etrex putting that in, all three up. And we have overtime in game four. Epsilon just one goal away from knocking Nordovin out and moving on. This is how Nordovin got their first win into overtime, a 1-0 scoreline, same situation. See if that overwhelming pressure can pay off. This is it. If Nordovind can't fend off Epsilon, they will be done. J Walls 
Hitting that down, D7 expecting it. On a miss there from Etrex, Fake Out does get the hit down. Reganum gonna have to make the play. Fake Out tried to take him out, but Reganum stays strong. But Pugs A dunks on both players. This is a chance, D7 pre-jumping, but J Walls holding firm. So close, just got underneath that a little bit too much. He wanted to pop that back inside, right in front of the net. Would have been a dangerous shot opportunity, which didn't seem to have the boost to get around it. As again, we go back to this ping pong action. Nobody wanting to make that mistake. Now Fake Out stealing the boost and getting the demo on Etrex. Pugze trying to get that block. He does. It drops straight down. Fake Out going for the shot. No. And that somehow sneaks by. And Epsilon is moving on. Look at this play on the side. Able to get that contest initially to play it right in front, but then on that wall, you see Etrex trying to get around as quickly as possible. Difficult situation. Either drops down and can't make it up in time, or he comes off the wall and doesn't get the angle right.